many of us would have been in places where we had pastors or maybe church people uh, saying things like I prophesy to you or asking you to prophesy to the person sitting by your left or by your right or asking you to hold the hand of somebody and prophesy to that person or asking you to prophesy to yourself or to prophesy to your spouse or to your children or to your parents and so on that is what we want to look at briefly we want to look at the issue of prophecy briefly prophecies are an aspect of the christian faith this is an aspect of Christ, of the christian faith and basically what really do we mean by prophecy we will do most of virtually everything we are going to do in this little study by simply checking what god says by his word in the bible on the subject of prophecy can we prophesy to our neighbor can we indeed prophesy to our friends does the bible allow anyone to prophesy to himself these are the issues we are going to look at and since this is a very important issue we, we will as i always advise we'll start by a word of prayer Dear Lord Jesus, we want to look at your words. We pray, O oh Lord, that you guide us and that you lead us. And you give me the right words to say, so that I say only those things that are in line with your will. And you cause everyone that will watch this video and listen to this teaching, Lord, to hear from you. To the glory and honor of your holy name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Prophecies are uh, they have special special meanings. And as I said, we start looking at it from what the Bible actually says. We start looking at prophecies from what the Bible actually teaches. And uh, maybe one of the best places we should start should be the book of Second Peter, chapter 2. No, I think it's, I think it's Second Peter, chapter 1. Second Peter chapter 1 Let, let's let's open to it we'll start the teaching on prophecies what really are they what does the bible say about them second peter um, i'll be reading second peter chapter 1 uh, i will read verse 20 and verse 21 for a start second peter chapter 1 verse 20 and verse 21 and i read knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man let me let me let me repeat myself in that place let me read that place again for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man 
But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. We must, re we must read the hope that those two verses again and again. So that we will, the God, the Holy Spirit, we allow the meaning to sink into our mind. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scriptures is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. The prophecy from God never came. No prophecy from God ever came by the will of the prophet. By the will of the man saying those words or writing them down. Please, you must note that. That is a very, very important thing. No prophecy ever came by the will of man. Jeremiah never prophesied. Isaiah never prophesied. Moses never prophesied. Elijah never uttered a word. Elisha never uttered a word. Zachariah never did. Micah never did. Amos never did. Because they wanted to. Uh, these teachings that I believe God is bringing to you, they are to serve a very, a very important purpose. And that is to help you distinguish between the light and the darkness between the mind of God and the mind that does not belong to God. Prophecies never came because the prophet wanted to say something. Never. Never. Not in the Bible. The Bible, the book of Isaiah, for example, is not, according to the Bible, is not the writing of Isaiah on what he knew, what he wanted to say. No, it's not. The writings of Jeremiah, they were not the mind of Jeremiah as Jeremiah. If you read these prophecies, you will see, Dot saith the Lord. It was the Lord that was talking. You will see at times, the, by the word of the Lord. So, we can say, just from these two verses, for a start, that God's prophecies... They are actually the mind of God revealed to a human being. You need to study the life of the prophets, the true prophets of God, so that you know that they never did anything. They never said anything. If they were not sure whatever God was going to say. The prophets of God never said anything in anger or in love or out of emotion because they, they just like this person. Therefore, they say something. No, it never happened. If you read the book of Jeremiah, for example, you have situations where some false prophets will hold his neck, slap him, and disgrace him.
Jeremiah never reacted. Jeremiah generally will go away. Maybe a few days later, God's word will come to him. Tell Hananiah or tell so so, so person. What he said was a rebellion against me. And therefore, he will not see the end of this year. Jeremiah never lashed out in anger. Because Hananiah slapped him. Because Sevaniah disgraced him. No. Because he knew. Jeremiah knew. That he had no right whatsoever to say, Thus saith the Lord, when the Lord had not spoken. So the prophets of the Bible, according to the word of God, they spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. They spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. I'm, I'll be opening the book of Second Timothy. Chapter 3. The book of Second Timothy, chapter 3. Uh, there's a phrase like that. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Re-emphasizing the same thing. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. In actual fact, this phrase, inspiration of God is translated as God breathed. The same way I am talking to you. That was the way the scriptures were given. Uh, you could talk of uh, the writing style of Jeremiah, the writing style of Isaiah, mm, the mannerism of, uh, of uh, Joel or something like that. But the content were always strictly Strictly from God. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. All of them. They do not come from the ideas of the man. That is part of what makes the Bible very, very different from any and every book on earth. That is what makes true Christianity very different from any religion or any faith in the whole world because it contains the mind of God and the mind of God only if you only know how to read it if you allow the Holy Spirit to explain to you the Bible you see only straight away the mind of the living God all scripture is given by the inspiration of God by God's inspiration, by God saying so. Therefore, if we go back, therefore, to where we started, when you are in a place and somebody asks you to prophesy to yourself or prophesy to your son or prophesy to your spouse, or prophesy to your neighbor. It doesn't take much to see that that does not align with the content of God's word. It doesn't align with the Bible. It does not take long to see that somebody who is asking you to prophesy to yourself or prophesy to your children or to your neighbor is teaching something very different, radically different from what you find in the Bible. Therefore, the issue, the issue of the false prophets and false prophecies is one of the main issues that God deals with in the Bible. Let me rephrase it and let me go back. If no prophecy of the Bible ever came by the will of a man, of any man, 
But people have been given prophecies that were not inspired by God. And people continue to give prophecies today. Prophecies that might sound plausible. The, you, some people might even believe them. Most people, many people will believe them. But they are not from God. What does the Bible have to say about such people? What, can the, what does the Bible say about such things? The Bible has a lot to say. Running through the whole of the word of God. I will be reading Jeremiah. I will be reading Ezekiel, Deuteronomy. We will come back and we'll read Peter, Second Peter again, Revelations, and so on. So please be prepared to check your Bible. As I warned earlier, in one of the earlier videos, you must check the Bible. God's word is the only thing that delivers people from error and deception. It's only God's word. It's only when you read God's word. That's the only time you know that Pentecostal people are, that they are, they are not working for God. They are not working for the Lord Jesus Christ. It's only the word of God. It's only the amount of the evil they teach from their mouth. Things that are totally against what you have in the Bible. That is the only thing that helps. The Lord Jesus Christ says that people who follow him, by they are following him, they know the truth. They will know the truth. It's only people who follow him that will know the truth. If your mind is made up that the Bible does not matter, that what, what you see in the Bible doesn't matter, but what your prophet, what your G.O., what your general superintendent says, they are more important than the words of God in the Bible. There's only one thing God promises you, and I can tell you that, and that is deeper and deeper deception so that you might be damned, so that you might go to hell. But if the word of God is important to you, if the word of God is important to you, God in his word promise that he will ensure that you even know more. God brings more light, more understanding to those that fear him. Do, to those that don't care about his word, he withholds his knowledge. He withholds his truth. So you've got to make up your mind that you will check the Bible. And when you check the Bible, then you will stand on the Bible. And no matter, even if you have followed any of these people for 50 years, you will uphold the word of God in spite of any human being, whoever that person is. Even if you, have, you are a big pastor, a coordinator, a director in any of these Pentecostal ministries, if you check the word of God and you discover that the word of God is against what they teach, you will take your stand. You will stand on the truth of the word of God. What does the Bible say about false prophecies and about false prophets? So many things. So many things. Perhaps uh, reading a few verses in the Bible to see what God says about prophets. People who give out their mind for his mind. People who, who say what they have in mind and they attribute it to God. Some of them are bracing enough 
to even use the phrase god told me uh you hear some of them saying the lord said i should tell you or my daddy said by daddy they mean god that god told them to say something in many of the prophecies of the prophets of our days you hear daddy said i should tell you or daddy said i should tell nigeria my daddy told me i should tell the government of the world what really does god say about people who say their minds while attributing their minds to god uh, a few passages of the bible make clear surely what god thinks about these people and these practices so let us say uh, perhaps start by reading uh jeremiah chapter 14 verse 14 jeremiah chapter 14 verse 14 let me open to it jeremiah chapter 14 verse 14 we hear god answering jeremiah because jeremiah was perplexed he was alarmed that the other prophets of his day they were prophesying good things in first 13 you said then said i ah lord god behold the prophet say unto them ye shall not see the sword neither shall ye have famine but i will give you assured peace in this place in a place where god was vehement that his judgment was about to come tens maybe hundreds of other prophets apart from jeremiah and maybe one or two others were assuring people that they are living their best life now and tomorrow could only could only be better and there was only going to be peace rather than judgment therefore you have in verse 14 then the lord said unto me the prophets prophesy lies in my name i sent them not neither have i commanded them neither speak unto them they prophesy unto you a false vision and definition and a thing of naught and the deceit of their heart the prophets of redeem the prophets of deeper life the prophets of winners chapel they are captured in what you have in jeremiah chapter 14 verse 14. they prophesy unto you a false vision and definition and a thing of naught and the deceit of their own heart who can read similar comment from god uh, well maybe perhaps maybe we should just read verse 15. uh no we can read similar comments from god and 16 possibly therefore thus say the lord concerning the prophet that prophesied in my name and i send them not yet they say sword and famine shall not be in this land by sword and famine shall those prophets be consumed by sword and by famine shall those prophets be consumed in chapter 33 there were of, of jeremiah jeremiah chapter 23 sorry you have so many things about false prophets and you have in verse 21 you have i have not sent these prophets 
yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. I, I want to solemnly inform you that the prophets, any prophet, anyone, no matter, no matter the number of PhD he has, no matter the amount, the number of PhD the, the, the so-called prophet has, if he stands up to tell you that there is prophecy for a nation, for a people, for six million people attending his fake church for a year, all the December 31st prophecies, all of them, I'm solemnly informing you that they are divinations, vanities, things said by godless people, people who don't fear God. It's people who don't fear God that we presume to give prophecies. And God says that he has not sent them. God has not sent redeemed people. He has not. He has not sent Winners Chapel people. He has not. He has never sent them. God has never sent deeper to prophesy to you. He has, um, if he has not never sent those people, you can therefore imagine the hundred of thousands of their lookalikes. God has never sent them. They prophesy divination. The, the, the word divination is a word that I think each of us should take a little more seriously. The word divination. What really do, does it mean? What does divination mean? It means you saying things out of your own mind and expecting, expecting God to carry them out. God says, I have not sent these people, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. In verse 22, he says that, But if they had stood in my counsel, if, if they, and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way, and from the evil of their doings. If the G.O. of the redeemed Christian Church of God, if he had stood in the counsel of God, it would have caused people to hear God's words. Instead of giving them false, fake, satanic prophecies. Simply reading the Bible, this is what God says is enough. Instead of giving your own peace of mind, your mind, as the mind of God as the prophecy of God. I think in Ezekiel, in Ezekiel chapter 13, chapter 14, there are various passages there. In chapter 13, if we read chapter 13 first, starting from verse 2, uh, let me try and open to it. Ezekiel chapter 13, starting from verse 2. Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy and say unto them. And sorry, let me start again. Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy and say unto them that prophesied out of their own hearts. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord God, Woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirits. I have seen nothing. Woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit. I have seen nothing. O Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the desert. They are only looking for what they will eat. Anyone God has not sent that stands up anywhere on any podium and says, God Gives, gave me a prophecy for you. My daddy said, my daddy gave me a prophecy for you. The Bible says that they are like foxes. They are only looking for what they will eat. 
they are like foxes. In chapter, in verse uh, 6, Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 6, they have seen vanity and lying definition, saying, The Lord says, and the Lord has not sent them. And they have made others to, to hope that they will confirm the word. You, you, you generally hear the, 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 for, the first prophets of Nigeria. They tell you, look, by, by the end of December 31st, by the end of next week, by the end of the month, by the end of the year, in the next two years, you will be riding jets. You will be having brand new Mercedes. All the spinsters and the bachelors will be wedded. And they will be carrying children. They cause the people to hope that they have any means of confirming what they have said. These are people who speak outside the will of God. They, these people don't know God. Talk less of hearing Him. They don't even know God. Talk less of hearing Him. These are people who learn the trade of divination from their cherubim and seraphim mentors. They are Ladura mentors. In the 60s and the late 50s and the early 70s. And they simply remove the white gowns are now projecting themselves to the world that they are born again people and of course you see them flouting virtually every rule in the new testament of what a christian or a christian leader should be in fact seven the god was talking to ezekiel about these same people have you not seen a vain vision and uh, have you not spoken a lying divination whereas ye say Whereas ye say, the Lord says, albeit I have not spoken. They are saying, the Lord says, while in actual fact, God said, he has not spoken. God has not spoken. And yet these people, they go about saying that God was the one that sent them. Whereas God had not spoken to them. Therefore said the Lord, I'm reading verse 8 of Ezekiel chapter 13. Because ye have spoken vanity and seen lies, therefore behold, I'm against you, said the Lord God. The Lord says that it's against all the false prophets. All the pro false prophets of the world. All the false prophets of Nigeria. All, the, all of them, that is against all of them. Therefore, say the Lord God, because he has spoken vanity and seen lies. Therefore, behold, I am against you, say the Lord God. And he even promised, in verse 9, that my hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity and that divine lies. That they shall not be in the assembly of my people. Neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel. If you need me to interpret that very plainly, nobody who gives false prophecy will be in heaven. Their name will not be in heaven. Unless they repent, unless they turn from the evil of their doing. Many of us don't even stop to think about what we are talking about. If any of us should go, ahead, should go ahead to the government of Ghana or the government of the U.S. and tell the presidents of those countries that he speaks for the presidents of Nigeria without author authorization, what if do you think that person is doing? What do you think, what punishment do you think is appropriate to such a person who goes out to, mis to misrepresent the, the president of Nigeria without author authorization. These people are misrepresenting the owner, not just the president, 
the owner, the creator, the sovereign of the universe without author authorization. I, I know some of my the people hearing and watching this video, particularly people who are followers of the the prophets of redeem the prophets of winners chapel and uh, the prophets of uh, even um, deeper life particularly in nigeria some of them will be afraid by now see what this man is, t is saying all these things he's saying he will soon die let me assure you that i'm not going to die let me assure you that the fake prophets of Redeem and of Winner's Chapel and of Deepa, the, the fake Pentecostal ministries prophets, they have got no power against true children of God. Their boss, who is the devil? does not decide my life or my death and i want to invite you to the lord jesus christ particularly some of you that are very much with these people and you are seeing not just because of this my video you have been seeing that this your geos, your general superintendents, or your bishops, they teach things that you yourself, you know, don't align with the Bible. But you are afraid. You are afraid of their causes because you know they generally do cause. Let me tell you that when you come out to the Lord Jesus Christ, the owner of the universe, You do not fall under the power of their causes. God is powerful. The true God is powerful. The Lord Jesus Christ is powerful and strong and mighty to protect all his own. Therefore, please take it that if any time you hear that the speaker dies, it means that I've run my race. It's not because any fake prophet cost me. They do not have the power. Causes do not work. Demonic causes do not work for true Christians of, for true children of God. It doesn't. They, it do, they don't work for true Christians. Let us open our Bible and check what God says in Deuteronomy chapter 18. We'll be back to Deuteronomy chapter 18 and I think the last two verses or something like that from around verse 20. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 20. What does God say? What did God say about this thing that I am telling you? I'm reading verse 20. But the prophet we shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded them to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods. Even that prophet shall die. That is God's verdict for every false prophet that speak in his name what he has not sent them to speak. And those that speak in the name of other gods. In verse 21, you, you see God answering the issue, the question that I raise in this section of this talk. If, and if thou in thy heart, and if thou say in thy heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord had not spoken? How do you know the, law, the, the, the word which the Lord had not spoken? God answered the question in verse 22. When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, and if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord had not spoken. 
But the prophet has spoken it presumptuously. God is giving you a guarantee after that, after that word. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. You should not. You must not. A Christian does not get afraid of false prophets. In the New Testament, Paul, I think, was reminding, uh, I think, t- either Timothy or so, that God had not given us the spirit of fear or timidity but he has given us sound mind so please just take the bible take the god of the bible by his word that is what is called faith in christianity he says in deuteronomy 18 verse 22 thou shalt not be afraid of him you shall not be afraid you must not be afraid of any and every false prophet of Nigeria and beyond. Every one of them, no matter whatever they say they can do. All you need to do is just hold the garment, the hem of the garments of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you are safe. There's a question that you should ask yourself. Why do these people do what they do? Apart from the question of of money, material things, God actually gave another reason why they do what they do. In Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 27, let us open it. This is the spiritual reason why the devil guides and commands people to give false prophecy jeremiah chapter 23 verse 27 let us read from verse 26 Jeremiah 23 from verse 23. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart. You see the reason now following this? Which think to cause my people to forget my name? Which think to cause my people to forget my name. You don't remember the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. When, once you start listening to the prophecy of Dr. Adebo, you don't remember the, the, the Lord Jesus Christ. The moment you start listening to the prophecy of Mr. Adebo, you don't remember the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is actually the purpose of their coming forward. That is why the devil has brought them forward. So as to cause you to forget the name of the Lord so that you will forget the Lord Jesus Christ and you will now be hankering about after the so called man of God after daddy after mommy not after the Lord Jesus Christ which thing to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams which they tell every man to his neighbor as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. forgetting the name of the lord is the purpose the aim and the end the spiritual purpose the spiritual aim and the end of false prophecy and false prophets so I've given you what God says about what you should do, what you should think. If anybody wants to sow fear into your mind, no. Briefly, before I close, let me look at Second Peter chapter two, verse three. 
I want us to look at a few things in Second Peter chapter two, verse three, concerning false prophets. Uh, starting from verse one of Second Peter, really. Second Peter chapter two, starting from verse one. There are a few things that I want us to to touch before we close this small talk. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privilege shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. I want us to look at what the Bible said they shall do. They shall bring in privilege, damnable heresies. False prophets and false teachers, they bring in damnable heresies. And part of the major part of the heresy is that they deny the Lord. That is verse 1. They deny the Lord Jesus Christ that bought them by his blood. They tell you that they are anointed ministers. They are Christ. They are in position to do whatever the Lord did. They are special beings. They deny the Lord. They deny the uniqueness. They deny the uniqueness of the Lord Jesus Christ. They deny the fact that you cannot emulate the Lord Jesus Christ. You can't imitate him. You can't imitate him. The best you can do is to follow him. But they say they can do miracles just as he did. And they know people will not ask the question. These teachings that you are giving us, the teachings of the redeemed, the teachings of the deeper, the teachings of winners, the teachings of the mountain of fire and miracles, these teachings don't rhyme with the teachings of the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ. They know people wouldn't ask that, those questions. They bring in damnable heresies. Such as some of them asking you to pray through their rods. The geo of the redeemed Christian Church of God in one of the videos in my hand was bracing enough. Was bracing enough to tell thousands of people, look, I'm going to raise up this rod for only two minutes. Look at it and pray. And people were looking at the rod in his hands and they were praying. And it never occurred to them that they were participating in idol worship. And they would leave the place, they left the place assuring themselves, deceived people whose hearts have been sealed. People in gross deception, they left the place thinking that they had prayed to God. Even though the man was telling, I'm going to hold this rod up for only two minutes. Look at it and pray. Somebody was bracing enough to say that and they called the person a Christian in Nigeria. Those are some of the heresies, damnable heresies. How you will, how you will face God that you are in a worship service and somebody raised a rod and asked you to pray, to look at the rod and pray, and you did so, and you will face God. And you will tell God you are not an idolater. What I don't know what else you call yourself if you if, if that is not an if that is not idolatry. Or you have a situation where some of these people, like the general superintendent of the of uh, deeper life gathering people together and telling them that their mouth will produce miracle the man was bracing enough bracing enough in teaching evil and telling them that miracles hide inside their mouth and they all go about celebrating that they were deeper christians idolaters calling themselves deeper life or 
situations where some of them will tell you that the blessings from God come from material things, financial or material things that you donate. And it doesn't occur to their deceived followers that that is an antichrist statement. That the blood of Christ, the blood of the Son of God, was being trampled upon by people who say that God will bless you because you pay money to the pastor or to the church. It never occurred to people. So please pick the book of Second Peter chapter 2 verse 1 and read those things again. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privilege shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them. The false prophets and false teachers of Nigeria are spreading damnable heresies, dragging the honor and the majesty of the Son of God in the mud every day. And as verse 3 of Second Peter chapter 2 will say, will put it, making merchandise of, of you. Making merchandise of Christian. Some of, the, some of the damnable heresies, of course, as you will hear from the mouth of the leaders of some of these churches, such as Deepa, is that mere faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is not enough to take you to heaven. They teach that mere faith, believing in Christ, which had been the only currency that had taken everyone from Abel to the last man that will enter heaven, from Abel, faith in Christ alone. The controllers of deeper life teach that Faith in Christ is not enough to take you to heaven. You have to follow some specially designed Hindu ideas and teachings, which he calls sanctification. Hindu, Hinduism. The Bible warns that these people, they shall privilege. Privily, I want you to, mind, to, to, to know that language, that word. They shall secretly, privately, while you are not being observant, bring in damnable heresies. False prophets bring in damnable heresies. They even go to the extent of denying the Lord Jesus Christ. They teach a lot of things that deny the Lord Jesus Christ. You, you only, as I said earlier, you only need to start picking your Bible and then you discover that much of what the deeper life teaches is a they are a total and ab absolute blatant denier of the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. We now have a reinterpretation before I go teaching that seats seats are now money. They reinterpret the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ, the parable of the sower, which teaches that the seeds in the in the in the Bible, the seeds are God's words. We are now told that seeds are money. And if you want big returns, you sow big seeds. Since faith in Christ is no longer enough, they teach you can be born again. And lose your salvation tomorrow. The Lord Jesus Christ, in his very, very many words, teaches that people who are born again are actually do are born again. Let me assure you that the Bible is true. The words of Christ can be more believed than the words of the Geo. Of redeem or deeper when you meet the Lord Jesus Christ and he tells you he has forgiven your sins and he gives you his Holy Spirit you are saved forever
do not do not let people who do not fear God teach you that you can be born again today and lose your salvation tomorrow. Read, just pick the book of John. Just read John chapter 3 and see the number of times you see eternal life, everlasting life. Just read the book of John alone and see the number of times you, you, you hear from the mouth of the Son of God that I give them eternal life and no one can snatch them from the hand of my Father. Of course, if you are not really a Christian, as they were not, then you can start believing that God can save you today and tomorrow you are lost. That is true for people who are not Christians. So they are, they are correct because they are not Christians. These are followers of Allah Dura ideas, Allah Dura teachings. Not necessarily Nigerian Allah Dura. They are followers of John G. Lake, followers of Dawi. These are followers of Kenai Higgins. All of these people are Allah Dura people. They are, they are white garment people. Some of them, when they, they drop their white garments, but that's what they, they were. They are all caught people. Lord, I pray, O oh Lord, that you bless everyone with your truth. Who has heard this by your spirit? Bless every such person. Cause them, O oh Lord, to pick your word and check. Just like the Bereans. Whether what they are hearing here is true or not. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.